Okay, good morning. Let's get started. Uh, the quizzes are coming back to you now. If you have any questions about your quiz, feel free to stop by during my office hours and I'm happy to go over it with you. If you feel like I misunderstood what you were doing or accidentally took off points that I shouldn't have. Uh, I've just collected homework 3A. Uh, your next homework assignment 3B, it looks like it's significantly fewer problems, so that's a good thing. Um, for problem number 66, that is kind of like an either or. The way that it phrases that question, it's basically saying, is it A or is it B? And you're not just supposed to pick one and leave it at that. You're supposed to actually provide some supporting calculations that proves the one that you select. So just wanted to make the obvious even more plain. Any questions on these announcements before we get started? Yes. Oh, thank you for asking. Good question. A uh, week from today. Anybody have the course schedule that can verify that? Blake, I see you've got yours. Yeah. week from today. Yeah, so let me add that now so I don't forget to put it on next time. Do, let's see, a week today is the 20th. All right. Other questions? No? Okay, let's travel back through time and remind ourselves of area moment of inertia. Okay, those of you who are in my lab section got a, a real quick taste of this sort of stuff when we were meeting on Wednesday, but here's the, uh, here's the full deal. The shapes on the top are the ones that you'll use when it comes to problem solving, quizzes, exams. The shapes on the bottom are a little bit less common, but you can see the formulas here for each of them. It's defining some parameter like the width and the height, so that for a rectangle, the width is A, the height of the object is B, and uh, what we assume with that shape is that B is the vertical component, so that if the, uh, the shape is flat, then we wouldn't necessarily ever need to calculate the area moment of inertia based on what we're doing in fluid mechanics, but if it's not flat, whatever the vertical component of that rectangle is, is what we're going to assign B. And here in the area moment of inertia formula, you see A, B cubed divided by 12, Kind of the way that you should remember when you're solving problems like this that B is the vertical component is you can see that we're cubing B. And when it comes to vertical, vertical is really important in fluid mechanics. It's the vertical distance, for example, that's causing an increase in pressure. And so we're going to be applying this area moment of inertia formula when we're calculating forces, hydrostatic forces. And um, so you'll need to uh, either memorize these or have them at the ready. In the back of your book, in the appendix, it has uh, several area moment of inertia formulas. You can see in the case of the uh, circle that R is the radius, so pi R to the fourth divided by four. And then the ellipse. Now you may think that the ellipse is kind of an obscure shape that you're not likely to encounter, but it turns out to be far more common than you might expect. And so here I'm rolling up a piece of paper into a tube, so it's a cylinder. And in fluid mechanics and in hydraulic engineering, we have a lot of hollow tubes. They're called pipes. And if you cut a pipe at an angle, so if we were to, if I had a laser and could cut straight, if we were to cut this pipe at an angle, then the shape of the opening would be an ellipse. So you have a circle, and then you deviate from the vertical with the circle, and then that shape is an ellipse. And so we'll actually see one of those uh, examples today as we're working through some uh, on the board and on your own. So the error moment of inertia formula for an ellipse, pi AB cubed divided by 4, where here it's a little bit different than it was with the rectangle. Remember we said the rectangle is the entire height of the vertical edge. Here B is only the distance from the centroid to the top edge, and so don't let that difference in how B is measured throw you off. B isn't the entire height, it's the height from the centroid, meaning the center of area, to the top edge. This is the type of thing that we're going to be looking at. In fact, you have this very drawing in one of your homework problems, although the dimensions are a bit different. Um, we're going to try and answer questions like, 
how hard is water pushing on the gate? You can see that right here we have, we don't know what it's made out of, but some sort of a gate that's holding back the water. The hinge that's there is going to pivot so that if we don't resist the hydrostatic force with some sort of an external force to the left on this gate, the water's pushing to the right. And so that hinge might rotate, the gate could open, and water could come spilling out. So how hard is the water pushing on the gate? That's the sort of thing that we're going to try and calculate with these uh, calculations. And so you'll notice that the dimensions that are given, first of all, four meters is the distance from the hinge down to the bottom. It doesn't matter how long the gate is below where the water is touching it. That distance at the bottom of the gate doesn't affect how hard the water is pushing on the gate because the water isn't in contact with the gate below this edge. Um, also, you'll notice that there's a dimension of one meter to this top of the gate down to the, wa down to the water surface, and that one meter dimension doesn't really matter with the hydrostatics. It might matter if you're calculating the weight of the gate uh, or its cost, but not the fluid mechanics side of it. You'll notice that also uh, the air has been labeled here. What does that tell you when it, say, when it reminds you that air is above something? Right, it's giving you a little reminder about the pressure. The pressure at the interface between the air and the water. So the water starts at a pressure equal to the air. And if we're engaged, usually we are thinking engaged terms. That means the pressure starts at zero. So here's the gate if we look at it from the front. And you'll notice we've got the area moment of inertia assignments here where A is the width of the gate, B is the height of the gate. And I didn't dimension all the way up to the physical height of the gate, but only the height of the gate that comes into contact with the water. And in fact, I should change that. That arrow should be a little shorter, right? It should only go to where the uh, water is actually this height here. So let me make that fix right now while I'm thinking about it. That's a little more accurate. Emphasizes the point that B only includes where the water is going to be touching the gate. All right. Here in green is a representation of the pressure experienced by the gate as you go deeper and deeper down into the water. The pressure is increasing. And why is it a linear slope? Like, why is it gradually getting higher and higher, and why isn't it curved? Hydrostatic force. Yeah, the, uh, the rate of pressure accumulation is gamma times h. You know, remember, delta p is gamma times delta h, and so that's the slope of the line is gamma. And these little arrows are just making the point that Pressure doesn't act in one single location. Pressure acts over the entire surface area that's in contact with the water. And pressure is in all directions. You know, down here, four meters depth, pressure is directionless, except for that in the case of this gate, what we're interested in is the pressure that's perpendicular to that gate face. And that's what these arrows are showing, is the pressure acting perpendicular to the gate is what's going to influence our equivalent hydrostatic force. So there's not just one force acting on this gate. There's actually a pressure distribution, and what we can do is we can represent that by a single force. And so here, the brown arrow with the F on it is a single hydrostatic force. And uh, what we need to do is find out the magnitude of that force and its location. Now, it's easy when the gate goes all the way up to the water surface to find the location of the hydrostatic force because this triangle, if you remember the uh, center, center of area of a triangle, the centroid of a triangle, is two-thirds of the way from the top or one-third of the way from the bottom. And so it becomes very easy for us to identify the location of the force here. We just say that from the water surface down to the bottom, it's two-thirds of four meters. So here's the centroid. The centroid of the gate is the center of area, the submerged component of the center of area. But it is the center of pressure, as it's called, that's sometimes a little more tricky to identify. 
the center of pressure is where that force is located. There's two different centers that we'll be calculating. So in this previous case that we are looking at, the gate goes all the way up to the water surface and we had a triangular distribution of pressure. Now, this is asking, what if the top edge of the gate isn't at the water line? So let's go back. Here, the top edge of the gate here has a pressure of zero, and that's why it goes from zero to some positive amount. But in this case, the top edge of the gate is already submerged, and so there's some positive pressure. It's not starting from zero. We still have the centroid in the same location as it was before because that's just the center of area of the object. But now the pressure distribution looks a little bit different. The pressure distribution isn't triangular. This is a trapezoid. And so it's not just a matter of it's two-thirds of the way down from the top edge of the, of the gate. It's more complicated than that. And so we'll see a formula that allows us to calculate where is that equivalent force. Now, if we're going to integrate the distribution of pressure over the area of the gate and then identify a single magnitude and location of a force, that's what this F and the big arrow represents. And finding how much it is and where it's located is the key to a lot of uh, fluid mechanic problems. So the force location is closer to the centroid than it was in the previous case. Previously, it was two-thirds of the way from the edge to where the force is located. Anytime the gate is below the water surface, that brings this force location closer and closer to the centroid. It's called the center of pressure. And the centroid and the center of pressure get closer together the deeper this is submerged because this trapezoid, the two edges of the trapezoid, become closer and closer in length the deeper you get. So those are just some concepts to sort of uh, set the stage for the definitions and calculations we're going to be doing with the rest of class. All right, let me bring the uh, screen up a little bit so that I can draw on top of this image. Uh, no markers. Yeah, that's not going to work. I'll just have to gesture, I suppose. All right, so the, uh, or I guess I could draw on this thing. Do you have one? A whiteboard marker? Oh, wow. You win the Boy Scout Award today. Be prepared, right? Thank you very much. More prepared than the instructor. All right, that's perfect. I appreciate it. Okay, so the first thing is uh, delta H. As far as these definitions go, you're going to be breaking down problems and looking at the geometry and trying to find out what is the depth to the centroid. So that means from the uh, water surface to the center of area. So, all right, so here is the delta H. Vertical distance from the centroid to the water surface. The next definition pressure at the centroid. Some texts will put a P with a bar over it just to identify that it's the pressure at a certain location. Here I'm just calling it P. But you use the hydrostatic equation to find it. So if you have delta H identified from just looking at the geometry of the drawing, then you multiply it by the unit weight of the fluid and you can find out the pressure at the centroid. Y bar is the inclined distance from the water surface to the centroid. Now you'll notice that this part is at an angle. It's not vertically inclined. And so what this Y bar is talking about is the distance along the edge of this inclined plate up to the water surface. And so here is Y bar from the centroid to the water surface. And the reason why we want to know that is that we use this uh, measurement of Y bar when we are finding the location of the force. So YCP is the inclined distance from the water surface to the center of pressure. Now I'm going to draw the arrow. Here's our equivalent hydrostatic force. And 
What YCP is, is let's say we're going down here. It is YCP. So it is the distance if you go in the inclined direction from where the force is located up to the water surface. And uh, we have a formula for that. And sometimes these plates are vertically inclined, and that makes our problems a little bit easier. If the plate is vertical rather than at an angle, when it's vertical, then Y bar is equal to delta H if it's vertically oriented. The depth of the centroid and the inclined depth of the centroid are the same if it's straight up and down. But when it's at an angle, then Y bar is going to be longer than delta H. So that's the case in this drawing. Any questions so far on what these things mean? So we have an equivalent force that we want to find the magnitude and the location of that equivalent force. This is the formula for YCP. Once you have identified what is Y bar, usually that's just by um, you know, applying geometry, whether it's the angles that are given or recognizing a 3, 4, 5 triangle or sometimes the dimensions are provided directly on the drawing. You'll have Y bar, area moment of inertia. We looked at the slide previously that showed the formulas for those, and so you'll have to calculate the area moment of inertia based on the shape that is experiencing contact with the water, and also the area is the area of a circle, area of a rectangle, or so on. And then from those things, you can calculate the uh, YCP. And the YCP will tell you where the force is located. So back to this drawing. YCP would tell you the inclined depth from the water surface down to where that force is acting on the gate. Okay, so any questions so far? So let's look again at uh, this drawing. This is the one that we saw before. And um, so we know the the 4 meter height and a 3 meter width for this. And we're going to go through the steps required to find out what is the magnitude and location of the hydrostatic force. So here are the steps that I'd suggest you follow. First step, grab the wrong one. First step, find the uh, distance from the water surface to the centroid. So find out what is delta H. So step one, what is delta H? Okay, step two, find the pressure at the centroid. Step three is going to find the hydrostatic force. And that, the hydrostatic force, is the pressure at the centroid multiplied by the area. So this is pressure at centroid. Find the hydrostatic force, which is the pressure of the centroid multiplied by the area of the object. Step four, find the location of the force. And that has a couple of sub-steps. The first one, we have to find the area moment of inertia. And then from that, you substitute everything you've got so far into the formula for YCP. Uh, finally, the magnitude of the force, force magnitude, This is the, uh, the force of water on gate in step three. Step five is uh, force applied externally. It's basically to keep the gate closed. And you'll notice that there's this extra F and uh, that's a moment analysis problem at that point. All right. 
So I'm going to pause the recording, stop talking, and give you some time to apply the definitions and break down the drawing into the step-by-step -step solution. We'll see if we can find out what is the magnitude and location of the hydrostatic force, first of all, and then how big does F have to be in order to keep that gate closed. Any questions? I put the uh, solution on the screen. So this is a pretty complicated way to find what you could have just found by two-thirds of the physical height of the gate, 2.667. But it, uh, it works in all cases, and so it's better to know those methods than the shortcuts. So the last part, finding the magnitude of the uh, hydrostatic force. I shouldn't have. Nah, anyways, I won't zoom. Um, we've got a certain force magnitude. Uh, we've just found over here 234.960 newtons pushing to the right. It's at a depth of 2.667 meters. And then resisting that, the distance is going to be 4 meters. That's the height from the, uh, from the edge where the force is located to the hinge. And we just need to know what is the F that's going to resist that. And since the moment length is, di uh, moment length is greater, 4 is larger than 2.667, then that's why the force is lower to keep the, go keep the gate closed. All right. Any questions before we move on? For the rest of our class time, we're just going to go through progressively more complicated examples. And so you get uh, practice in interpreting these types of problems. Um, this one is very similar to the example we just worked, except for that now the gate isn't located at the water surface. It's actually submerged below the water surface. And so we'd be forced to use the YCP approach for this one. We wouldn't be able to just count on the uh, force location being two-thirds of the way down from the edge of the gate. Uh, so here we again have 20 degrees Celsius water, which tells us the unit weight. Uh, H here, the total height of the water, H is 6 meters. And then the gate dimensions are given as 3 meters tall and 2 meters wide. So you can see that side view is also provided. 2 meter width, so that means that A is 2, B is 3. So to find the magnitude and location of the hydrostatic force, um, this time we're not going to have a moment analysis step. And so we can erase step 5 from the previous example that we worked. But the procedure is the same. First, we want to find out what is delta H, so I'll erase the previous value. Then we're going to find P bar, which is the pressure at the centroid. Find the hydrostatic force of water on the gate, so the magnitude will be pretty easy to find. The location, though, is a little bit tricky because we'll have to find the area moment of inertia, first of all, the I, and then apply the YCP equation. Now, we're lucky because, once again, here, it's vertically oriented. And when the gate is vertically oriented, vertically oriented, so vertical gate, the interpretation of that is delta H equals Y bar. Um, 
but they won't always be straight up and down. We've got an example here in a moment where it's not straight up and down. So again, I'll pause the recording, give you some time to analyze the dimensions here, find out where's the centroid, what's the depth of the centroid, and so on. And uh, we'll take a look at the solution in just a moment. Uh, it turns out that for this problem, the, uh, maybe the hardest thing is identifying delta H. Because this drawing definitely is not to scale, right? When they give you the dimensions there, H is 6, uh, the gate height is 3. And by, by the way, just as a side tangent comment, eventually you'll take the FE exam. And the FE exam often has drawings that are not to scale like this. And so it's... Uh, a good habit to not make assumptions based on how things appear on paper and instead go by the numerical descriptions that are in the problem statement and so on. So that's why I give you the suggestion, do your own sketch because then it will be less messed up than this one. You'll be able to dimension it a little bit smarter. All right, so uh, we start off by finding the delta H and the way I said it was it's going to be six meters all the way from the water surface to the bottom and then from the bottom to the centroids 1.5 so that's why here it was a subtraction thing you could have said it's three from the ed this edge to this edge and then another 1.5 so it also three plus 1.5 would give you the same result uh, then finding the pressure at the centroid which is what we need to ultimately find the magnitude of the hydrostatic force and combining all that together, find the magnitude of the force, 264.3 kilonewtons. And then the location of the force is specified by the area moment of inertia and the formula for YCP. And uh, 4.667 meters is the distance, the inclined distance from the water surface to where the force is located. In this case, since it's vertically oriented, the inclined distance is the same as the vertical distance. So any questions from this example? All right, well, let's keep moving. The final force is 264,330 newtons. Excuse me? Magnitude wouldn't be different. Wouldn't be different? I don't, I'm not following. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one didn't have a moment analysis. Right. Yeah, I see what you're asking. Yeah, if this was asking then, so what we calculated was how hard the water is pushing on the gate. And if we were finding how hard do we have to push on the gate, then that would be an additional step. We'd have to know where is that external force applied and um, uh, and then we could calculate the magnitude of it but in this case it was just the hydrostatic itself that we needed to calculate so, reasonable question are there any other before we move on all right so finally here's one of the inclined gate problem inclined part problems it complicates the geometry for us this is going to take you back to middle school, having to think about sines and cosines and all of that. Uh, so we have a 2 by 3 gate, same dimensions as the last problem, but uh, it's submerged 5 meters from the water surface to the top edge. Now, these front views and side views get a little bit tricky for us when the gate is inclined, and the reason for that is that the front view can't give us the physical height of the part. Uh, the front view can give us the width of the part, but it can't give us the height of the part. Because since it's inclined, if we said that it's some distance from this top edge to the bottom edge, that would be the projected distance, not the physical distance of the part. So it's the side view that tells us what the B parameter is. And so remember, A is the width, so A is 2 meters in this problem. 
and B is 3 meters, but we'd only know that from a side view uh, or we'd have to correct the dimensions from the front view using the angle that's provided. So a 45 degree angle, which is going to mean that here, uh, delta H and Y bar aren't the same. In all the, the, the previous two problems we've done, Y bar equals delta H, but for this one it won't be. Okay, so the, uh, the question is asking us to find the magnitude of the force, the area moment of inertia, and the location of the force. So, I mean, ultimately it's the same steps as we've done so far. Find delta H. Now this isn't vertical, so I'm going to erase this previous little hint. We'll find the pressure at the centroid, and the pressure at the centroid will tell us the hydrostatic force. That still applies. And then to find the location of the force, we'll find the area moment of inertia, and then the YCP. So when a problem asks you to find the location of the force, you can answer that question just by calculating YCP. Um, that's the format that is, uh, is fine for calculating the location of the force. All right. So I'm going to turn you loose. The, the previous problem, the hard part, was finding the delta H. And this is kind of no exception. This one, you're going to have to do a little bit of geometry to find out what is the uh, depth to the centroid. You guys are seriously the endurance champions of fluid mechanics today. We're just example after example. It's like brutal, right? These 75 minute classes, I don't know how you stand it. I'd go nuts if I was, uh, yeah. You don't? You're, uh, you're under a tree right now in your mind? Yeah. All right, so the geometry here actually uh, affects us twice because since it's inclined, we have to first of all find the depth of the centroid, but then calculating the Y bar is tricky too. Uh, so as I was walking around, it seemed like everybody was headed on the right track. You know, finding the uh, depth of the centroid is the five meters vertical plus a little more vertical, the vertical component of that three meters divided by two. So 1.5 times the sine of 45. Uh, I jumped right to the magnitude of the force. So area multiplied by delta H times gamma. So this is P bar mul multiplied by area. So 356.7 kilonewtons. The area moment of inertia formula, even when it's uh, starting to go at an angle, it still has a width and a height. And the height is the actual physical height. It's not the vertical component of the height, not for area moment of inertia. And so the A is 2 and the B is 3. And then the uh, location of the force gets a little tricky because, again, we have to uh, look at the geometry. So the depth of the centroid is 6.061 meters. That's the vertical component of the triangle. And we want to know what is the hypotenuse of that triangle. So the inclined distance from the centroid to the water surface. And so if we again factor in the 45 degree angle, then we can get Y bar there. Anybody else get the same value for Y bar? Good, good. It's always reassuring. So then we apply the YCP formula and we find out the uh, the force location. Now you'll You'll notice that the depth of the centroid, the, in, the inclined distance to the centroid, and the inclined distance to the center of pressure are pretty close together. It's only a distance of 0 .087 meters that the difference from where the uh, centroid and the force location is. Um, so here on the board I've drawn, here's the centroid, and then the force is located a little bit lower than the centroid. And sometimes we'll rearrange this formula uh, to solve this for YCP minus Y bar. And so if we do YCP minus Y bar, then all that's left on the right side of the equation is 
i divided by y bar a. And the reason why we do that is sometimes these gates are pinned about the centroid, and then the moment distance would just be ycp minus y bar. We'll maybe see one of those problems in the homework, but um, the point I wanted to make is that since this is fairly deeply submerged, the deeper the submergence, the closer together y bar and ycp are going to get. The, uh, the difference between them becomes insignificant when you get really deep, but here it's not quite to that yet. So any questions on this example? Okay, so we've done rectangular inclined plates. Let's take a look at an inclined plate that is an ellipse. So it's an elliptical gate because it's a pipe that's been cut at an angle. This is a pipe that's coming into a tank, and then it was cut at an angle, and then there's a gate on that tank that is being closed by the force of the water. So the hydrostatic force is pressing to hold that gate closed, and we need to pull with F. We don't know how, what the magnitude is, but we're trying to open the gate. Um, so here, we've got uh, some geometry we're going to be doing. And as you consider the inclined distances, you'll notice that if you follow the, the line up to the water surface, you run out of water. So what I've shown you so far is that you follow this angle up to the water surface, but we're outside of the container now. All you do is you just assume that the water continues further than it does, because uh, it doesn't really matter how wide things are. The width of a reservoir doesn't affect the pressure at a certain depth. And so just extend the water surface over to the right, and so the inclined distances will intercept the extended water surface. So in this example, first you'll find the uh, magnitude of the hydrostatic force. That's talking about the force of the water pushing on the gate. Then you'll find the inclined distance to the center of pressure. In other words, the, where the force is located and then the force required to open the gate, which will be the, uh, the force that's pictured here, the F. And this is one of those examples where it can be useful for us to find the difference between YCP and Y bar. Because, uh, let me do a drawing over here on the right side of the board. If we have the hinge at one end of the gate, we know the gate is how long is the gate? We have a 4, a 3, and a 5 triangle. So the physical length of this is 5. So that means to the centroid is going to be 2 and a half. Okay, so it's 2.5 and 2.5, like so. Uh, and there's going to be some hydrostatic force pushing here. And then this distance right here is going to be uh, YCP minus Y bar. Because uh, Y bar takes us all the way up to the water surface. That's Y bar. And then here's YCP, that distance. So YCP minus Y bar is going to make it easier to do the moment analysis part here in step three, where it's asking for the force required to open the gate. If we just calculate YCP minus Y bar, then the moment distances are going to be, there's going to be the hydrostatic force, which is going to be acting at 2.5 meters plus YCP minus Y bar. And that's going to be counteracted by whatever the F is that's shown in the problem. And that moment distance is 5 meters. So that's a small leg up once you get to the last part of the problem. But the first part, first part of the problem follows the same procedure that it has so far. We find out the uh, delta H which will tell us the P bar, and then the, find the hydrostatic force of the water on the gate, 
is going to be the pressure at the centroid multiplied by the area. So those three steps will give you the first answer that you need. Then the inclined distance to the center of pressure. That's going to be a little bit of geometry when you have to, if you've got eight meters from the hinge to the water surface, you'll find out, well, what would be the inclined distance of that eight meters? Use similar triangles. You know, if you've got a three, four, five triangle with the uh, gate, So our gate is um, 3, 4, 5, then you can find out what is the inclined distance of that 8 by applying the idea that the ratio of the vertical component to the hypotenuse will tell you what's the inclined distance of the 8. So I don't want to give too much away. I'm going to pause the recording and give you some time to start working on this one. There's more than one way to solve this problem when it comes to the geometry. Um, the way that I found the delta H was just saying that since it's a four, diam four meter diameter pipe that's been cut, that means the vertical component of the, uh, of the gate covering on the end is two meters. So uh, over on the other whiteboard there, I've made it maybe a little more clear. It's, the eight meters to the edge and then two meters from the edge to the centroid. So that's where the uh, 10 meter delta H comes from. Now the uh, equivalent triangles thing is maybe a little bit less intuitive, but if we're trying to find out what is the Y bar, then that will be the inclined component of the 10 meters. So we know that the delta H is 10 meters, what is the slant distance or the inclined distance from the centroid to the water surface? Well, um, because of it being a 3, 4, 5 triangle, that is the how inclined that plate is, the 4 in the inclined in the triangle uh, corresponds to the uh, 10 meter delta H, and then the 5 corresponds to the Y bar. So we can solve for the Y bar. It should be 12.5 meters from the centroid to the water surface. Um, so then calculating the area moment of inertia with the formula for an ellipse, we get 24.5 meters to the fourth. And then you'll notice that I've rearranged the traditional formula of YCP into what I'm saying that here is going to be more useful to know the distance between the centroid and where the force is located. Because later on, down here, I've just added the two together. I've added the 2.5 meters, that is from the hinge to the centroid, and then I've also added on the 0.125, which is the additional distance below the centroid to where that force is located. So it's how much further lower deep into the water from the centroid to where the hydrostatic force is located. All right. We're out of time, so let's uh, pause here. We've got one more example we'll pick up when we get together on Thursday. But as a reminder, you've got another homework assignment. The fun never ends. You could get started early on this. We've covered some good ground today. So I think that assignment is due on Tuesday of next week. I guess that should say Tuesday. But anyways, have a good one. I'll see you on Thursday. <coughs>